Barbie. Thanks, guys. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Lee Cowan. If it's summer, it's also blockbuster season. Ben Mankiewicz is our man in Hollywood. They may be the most famous two notes in Hollywood history. Directed by Steven Spielberg, just 26 years old, Jaws surfaced in the summer of 1975. John Williams' theme and those teeth scared families out of the water and into movie theaters, becoming the blueprint for the modern blockbuster. The way that shot is framed now, it's so clear now what it's for. Like, Even expecting it, I know. it's such a shock. Dana Stevens is a film critic for Slate. I was a kid when Jaws came out, but I remember that in primetime every night there'd be you know these scary trailers for Jaws on TV. And so by the time it opened in the summer of 75, people were hyped. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It was a blockbuster about summer, set in summer, about things that we totally associate with summer. That was a big part of it yeah. too, right? 34 years after Jaws, Avatar redefined the blockbuster. So far, it's earned three billion at the box office. The blockbuster has been good to Stephen Lang. Yes, it has. I'm very fortunate. A prolific character actor, Stephen Lang played the villain, Miles Quaritch. I need to know how to force their cooperation or hammer them hard if they won't. In Avatar, Hollywood's biggest money maker ever. It widened the array of choices yeah. that I had. Look, one time they asked Robert Mitchum, and said, well, how do you choose your roles? And he said, well, I read what's offered and accept the least embarrassing. <laughs> the formula established by Jaws, then exceeded by Avatar, is in theaters this summer. There's Mission Impossible. Indiana Jones. Oppenheimer. I don't know if we can be trusted. They all fit the definition of a big-budget, mass-marketed movie designed to make big money at the box office and beyond. The truth is the blockbuster is a concept, an idea, a strategy that Hollywood had been using for quite a few decades before 1975 when Jaws was released. Charles Acklin chronicles this cinematic business model in his book, American Blockbuster. In broad daylight, mighty squadrons roar across the North Sea. The term's origin story is no Hollywood tale. It came from the American military, the name of a devastating World War II bomb. The blockbuster was initially the highest capacity explosive that had ever been used in warfare. And here is the 1943 U.S. model blockbuster. There was very, very high public awareness of what this was. Movie studios repurposed the word in the late 1940s and 50s, first as a way to sell films to theaters, later to lure audiences back from TV by promoting grand epics, often on a biblical scale. In 1959, the New York Times used the word blockbuster in its review of Ben-Hur. Of course, not all these epics succeed. There's 1963's Cleopatra. Who directed uh, Cleopatra? It escapes me. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it was my great uncle, Joe Mankiewicz. 12 years later, Jaws rewrote the rules. <laughs> For every big budget blockbuster, there are nearly as many big budget bombs. John Carter, The Lone Ranger, The Adventures of Pluto Nash, and famously, Ishtar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great affection for Ishtar now, in part because of how poorly received it was at the time and how quickly it became just this joke. Meanwhile, far less expensive sleepers hit the jackpot. Nobody could put Dirty Dancing in a corner. Released in the summer of 1987, it cost roughly six million to produce and returned more than 200 million. This falls really into that niche about the, the, the women's movie, a movie that focuses on a female character and her world that isn't sci-fi adventure, you know, doesn't have any violence in it, and has massive, massive appeal. Cold shower. Premiering oh, next week, roof. Barbie. And my heels are on the ground. <gasps> Black 
directed by Greta Gerwig, similarly focused on a female character. Author Charles Acklin believes the movie will sell much more than tickets. What we are talking about here are these really gigantic uh, uh, investment opportunities. In the case of Mattel, reintroducing Barbie as a particular item of relevance to many different audiences. For Stephen Lang, the key to turning a big-budget film into a blockbuster comes down to a single word, story. I think as a rule, it's good to have a very simple narrative. Take E.T. I would characterize E.T. as a blockbuster, although, you know, it doesn't have the huge, huge scale. But what it does have, it's got the cutest alien ever created. And the storyline is pretty simple. I'm here, I'm stuck, and I want to go home. The fact is, what matters to movie lovers isn't the take at the box office, but what we take away from the film. You just don't want to leech the art out of Hollywood. Think of the films that have come out of there, you know. They've been extraordinary. And they can't be just replaced by, you know, comic book characters and just huge stunt films, you know, from, from end to end. Everybody who goes to the movies wants to either laugh or cry to experience intense emotions. People want to see something move and they want to be moved. Right, something that moved really... in both senses. Right. Moving on screen and moving something inside you.